All right, we're back. Uh, the next portion of the study deals with uh, charge moving through a conductor. Charge moving through a conductor is a lot like water going through a pipe. And when we talk about the flow of charge, or when dealing with the flow of charge, dealing with the size of the pipe can determine how much water flows. So water can take many paths in this case, and, and how much water follows, oh, I don't know, each path will depend on the path itself. This is an interesting picture. So the question is, how, would, how could the wire in the circuit affect the current? Wires offer resistance. And we'll define this a little bit early. The resistance of a wire depends on what type of material the wire is made of. That's called its resistivity. We use a Greek letter rho. Depends on the length of the wire. And then finally, the cross-sectional area of the wire. Talk about this in a second. If a wire is like a pipe, current is like water that flows through the pipe. So we can see here these waters would be currents. Uh, if, the, if there were pipes with water in them, what could we do to the pipes to change the speed of the water or the current? So if we wanted to decrease, let's just say decrease the resistance, make water go faster, we could decrease the resistivity, decrease the length, and increase the area. Excuse me. Let's take a peek at the answer. Oh, how about that? We could change the cross-sectional area to make it bigger. A larger cross-sectional area will give you smaller resistance. We'll change the length, and we wouldn't be changing the pipe itself, but we could change the resistivity. Um, and the easiest way to remember this, wires like it, so wires with short resistances like it short. That means a small length, and the second thing they do, a big cross-sectional area. They like it fat. And then a sidebar thing. Wires also like it cold. But we don't account for temperature in this formula. So we'll use this formula. I'm going to highlight it. So let's just highlight everything. I'll group this so we can refer to it. or paste it as needed. And copied in memory. So let's carry it forward. So the resistivity and resistance can be related. Resistance is the opposition to the flow of charge. And the resistivity is uh, uh, an intensive physical property that determines the resistance. So let's paste it. How are resistivity, which is rho and resistance related, if you increase the resistivity, you would increase the resistance. The opposite of resistivity is conductivity. So again, we can see that resistance is proportional to resistivity, length, and inversely proportional to area. So every conductor conducts electric charge for, to a greater or lesser extent. Even insulators have some conductive property. Even insulators, or what we believe to be insulators, can move charge. Think about air. Air is, <clears throat> excuse me, air is an insulator, but charge can move through it with lightning given a large enough potential difference or a large enough voltage. The last example also applies to conductors like copper wire. If we decrease the length or increase the cross-sectional area, we would increase the conductivity, thus decreasing the resistivity. So increased conductivity is the same as decreasing resistivity. Let's switch colors. Also, the measure of the conductor's resistance to uh, conduct is called resistivity. Each material has a different resistivity. Again, it's represented with a letter rho. Combining what we know, area length and resist resistivity, we can find the total resistance. And again, just to show you, this is the equation we defined. So we'll carry that forward and use it. Uh, resistance is measured in ohms. 
cross-sectional area is measured in meters squared. Length is measured in meters, and resist, resistivity or measure is measured in meters. So how do we define the cross-sectional area for a wire? If I were to draw a wire, so just imagine a cylinder, the cross-sectional area is that face, and the area of any circle is pi times r squared. Uh, what is uh, the resistance of a good conductor? A good conductor has a low resistance, and that means charge can move through it. So copper, it has a relatively low resistance. The electrons within this, if I draw, just imagine we have an electron, and we have an atom, an atom, an atom, so we're making all these little teeny tiny, tiny lines of atoms. This electron is free to jump from one atom to another. Those electrons are said to be delocalized. So these valence electrons within copper are able to, to move from one atom to another, or electrons in general. Uh, this is a chart that gives us resistivity of some common conductors. We're always going to deal with copper for all the problems. So the resistivity is 1.68, but not 1.68 alone. 1.68 times 10 to the negative 8. That's a number we'll commit to memory, at least for this problem solving set, because we're going to always deal with the resistivity of copper. If we go in this direction, from the top to the bottom of the chart, the resistivity goes up. As we increase the resistivity, we'd be increasing the resistance. Now silver has a slightly smaller resistivity than, say, copper. Why not just equip our entire home, homes and electrical grid with silver conductors? It's not practical because silver is much more expensive than, let's say, copper and so on. So in this problem, we're going to rank the materials in order from best conductor to worst conductor. And the if you look, we deal with iron, copper, and platinum. Platinum, iron, and copper. Copper, iron, platinum. So we're going to deal with these copper, iron, and platinum. So we'll draw dots next to these just to keep track. As we go from the top to the bottom, we increase resistivity and if we increase resistivity we would be decreasing conductivity conductivity is represented with another greek symbol so we'll go in this direction so we go from copper to iron to platinum as we go from copper to iron to platinum we're going to increase resistivity so copper has the smallest resistance Iron has a moderate resistance, platinum has a high resistance, so the worst conductor has the highest resistance. And the answer, according to our data table and our conclusions, will be C. So copper has, again, let's just draw, has a low res resistivity, and platinum, well, we'll just steal this, has a high resistivity.